Hey guys, I'm Dan. This is Guns and Guitars, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Today, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to solder and wire guitar electronics. Okay, so I'm gonna go through a few products that I use, and I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks that I've figured out along the way to get the best soldering joints possible for your guitar electronics. So again, I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. Let's get started. This week, I was hoping to get my Mose Wright style guitar build done and filmed and edited and uploaded for you guys. Um, but I'm, as you can see, running a little bit behind schedule. It's not even wired up yet. So instead of doing that video for you, I'm gonna do something different this week. And I'm gonna make a video for you that I've been wanting to make for a long time. And this is going to be just a basic wiring and soldering tutorial for guitar electronics. So I'm gonna run you through some of the tools that I use and link them in the description. Full disclosure, those are affiliate links. What affiliate links are, are basically custom links that link to products on Amazon. And if you make purchases from those links, I will get paid a commission. Now, that being said, I hope you don't feel like this video is just one giant sales pitch for the products and components that I use here. I'm just showing you what I use. Um, and I've tried a bunch of different things, so I know kind of what works and what doesn't work. And by purchasing through an affiliate link, it does not cost you any more than if you found these components yourself on Amazon. So that's a great way for you to support my channel. If you like what I'm doing here, you wanna see more of these kinds of tutorials and guitar builds, and you plan to buy those products anyway, just use my affiliate link and then that'll throw me some commission and then I can make more of these videos. So I appreciate it if you guys would consider doing that. But enough of that, let's get into what we're doing here. So I've got my soldering iron heating up here and I've um, shown you this uh, in previous videos. Um, this is just a cheap little $20 soldering iron kit. And it came with a lot of cool stuff, some various soldering tip attachments, um, a solder sucker, which you guys will see me use from time to time. Um, and that's really cool. You just heat up the solder and then it sucks it right out like a suction cup, um, which is very handy. Um, it comes with solder that's actually really good. Of course, I've already gone through that solder, so I'm gonna be using this solder right here and I'll link it in the description. And this is just 60-40 rosin core uh, solder and I forget what the diameter is, but I'll link the exact stuff that I use here. And this stuff is legal in the United States. Um, I know there are some countries that don't allow lead solder because the lead fumes can be poisonous. So, um, but this stuff is great because it has a low melting point and it um, holds really strong uh, with that 60-40 blend. So I highly recommend this stuff if you live in a country that allows it. So just make sure that if you are using this stuff that you do it in a well-ventilated area so that you're not breathing in those toxic fumes on a regular basis. So, but I highly recommend this stuff, it works great. Highly recommend the soldering iron. It's got a temperature gauge on it. And as you can see, I've got my temperature gauge set to about 400 degrees. I don't know how accurate that temperature gauge is. I just know from my experience that that setting on this particular one, not necessarily if you were to buy the exact same one, it might be a little bit off, but on this particular soldering iron, 400 degrees is perfect for what I am doing. And so um, let's just talk real quick the basic soldering technique, okay? So a lot of people think that what you wanna do is when you're trying to solder a wire, you will just put some solder on your soldering iron like that, and then you will try to wipe it onto your component. And as you can see, that's not gonna work very well. It kind of sort of sticks and it kind of sort of doesn't. Um, that's not the best way. Now I'll just go ahead and demonstrate my solder sucker since I already put that on there. If I heat this up, and I can suck that solder right off. So <laughs> it's pretty sweet. I like that thing. Anyway, that is really terrible soldering technique. That is not what you wanna do because the reason is that solder does not wanna to stick to cold metal it wants to stick to hot metal. So when it's melted, it wants to stick to something hot. So if you heat it up, you melt it on your soldering iron, and then you touch it to a cold pole, it's not gonna wanna stick. It's gonna wanna stay on your soldering iron because your soldering tip is hot. So in order to get the solder to stick, what you need to do is first heat up your component um, so touch your component with your soldering iron and then touch the solder to the component that you are doing as opposed to touching it directly to the soldering iron. And that way you will get the solder to stick to the hot component as opposed to sticking to the soldering iron itself. 
So that is the basic theory and I'll kind of show you and practice how we do that. But first we're gonna clean our soldering tip and this is great to do because it will just make your life soldering so much better. So this is just like a little brass foil thing. I don't know, I just read on Amazon that this is what you use to clean the tip, so I got it. It's like $4 or something. Again, there'll be a link in the description, but just stick your soldering tip in there and kind of mash it around, and that'll, that'll scrape off any like loose, melted solder that's already on there. Um, and then just a real quick thing to get rid of the oxidation that's left from soldering. Um, ooh, that was good. Just drop that right there on camera. Stick your soldering tip into this. This is tip tinner. There's the... Um, so you can see what it looks like right there, tip tinner. And from what I understand, this stuff um, kind of uh, boils off the oxidation and leaves you with a nice clean tip there. So what I do is I do that and then I wipe it again on my little brass uh, spongy thing, whatever. And now we've got a nice clean tip to start soldering. What I have here, this is my DiMarzio FS1 bridge pickup and I'm gonna be wiring it to this double pull, double throw switch right here. And basically that's going to be a phase switch. So I'm gonna wire this up so that I have my hot and my ground to my middle poles. When you throw the switch up, um, I'm gonna have my hot and ground coming out here, going to where they're supposed to go, business as usual. And then down here, when you flip the switch down, then I'm gonna have jumpers that will jump the hot to the ground and the ground to the hot, and that will reverse the polarity. So. As you can see here, I already stripped one of the wires. I'm actually gonna zoom in so you can see this portion a little bit better. Sorry, I have the worst tripod in the world. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, I've already cut and stripped one of the wires. This one isn't stripped yet. And the easiest way to do that is with wire strippers, go figure. Um, and this is probably one of those things that you don't really wanna cheap out on. So I bought these at Lowe's and I think I paid $15 for them and they were a solid investment. So I can cut the wire right there and then I can strip whatever gauge I want right there. I've used um, cheap wire strippers before and they are kind of a pain. Um, these are nice and sharp and they get the job done well. So you can see, I'll just stick it in the appropriate gauge slot right there. And then I clip down and pull away and bam, stripped. So easy, okay? So much easier than using a knife or your teeth or whatever else. Then you wanna twist up the end really well and that is important okay because when you twist the end up really well you're essentially what you're doing is you're kind of braiding the wire and so it turns into kind of like a rope or like a wick and so you want your wire to be a wick for the solder so when the solder gets hot um, and it touches your hot wires then uh, you want this thing to wick it up to soak it into the wire Okay, so it is important that you twist it up because it, it doesn't wake up nearly as good if it's not twisted, okay? So you got your ends twisted. It also certainly helps for trying to thread these things through the little tiny holes in our miniaturized components here. So because this is a face switch, it doesn't matter which one's hot and which one's ground because uh, in one position it's gonna be normal and the other position it's gonna be reverse. Um, but I believe that the, in DiMarzio, the white wire which I have connected to yellow because I had to extend it because that lead got cut short about this pickup used. Um, so the white wire I believe is ground and the black one I believe is hot. Um, if I recall correctly, DiMarzio is kind of backwards from what most people do. So we're gonna call yellow ground and black hot for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my hot connection to this middle lug right here. And the way I do that is I will just bend this to be like a 90 degree angle. So can you see that right there? Yeah, bent to a 90 degree angle. And then I am just going to thread this through that hole like that, okay? And then because it's bent at a right angle, I can pull the wire back and that'll push my uh, 90 degree so it's kind of facing straight up. But basically what I wanna do is I wanna get that and then I can pinch that little part that's straight up and then I can bend my wire up. So what that did is that created, and I'll, I'll move it closer so you can see. So you can see my wire goes through that hole and just pops up the other side. So you see? So I kind of just hooked it right through there, okay? And this is my technique because I don't like to use, like soldering kind of inherently takes like nine hands, okay? So there's a couple ways that you can um, kind of take care of that issue. Is one, you get yourself some more hands, which I do have what I call the handy helper. And that's because my kids watch way too much Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. So this is my handy helper. 
Um, if you have poor eyesight, it's got a magnifying glass. I don't ever use it. My eyesight's fine. Um, but I've got two alligator clips and it's completely posable. So you can use those to hold your stuff in place. Um, I don't do that. What I typically try to do, and I moved my camera. There we go. What I try to do is I try to just get the wires to stay in place themselves. So this is one of those ways you hook it around nice and tight so you can see it's staying in place itself. Now, in order to solder this thing together, what we're going to do, like I said, we are going to heat up the components and then touch the solder to the hot components. So I'm gonna come in here and hopefully you guys can see this good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch my component from this side with my soldering iron and then just for a real brief moment, just long enough for those components to heat up, then I'm gonna come in with my solder and touch it from this side. And hopefully the solder will melt and weld those together. So just like this, touch it and then there we go. So you do that nice and fast because you don't wanna hold your heat source to your component for longer than you have to. Okay, um, and the reason why is because you can actually burn out your components. So that's why it's important to have your um, soldering iron set to the proper temperature because um, I found that even though the solder will melt at about 350 or 325, I have to hold it longer to the component in order for that component to heat up enough for the solder to stick to it. So I found that at 400, at least on this soldering gun, if I set it to 400, it heats up the component faster to a temperature that the solder will stick to. So I don't have to hold it as long. So therefore the rest of the components inside this component um, don't get as hot. So it will heat up that first component that I'm touching, that little lug, that little pole, uh, quickly without having to heat up the whole rest of the unit. And that's what, that's what causes units to burn out is when you hold the heat source to it too long and that heat travels through the rest of the components and causes things to kind of get melted and welded together that you don't necessarily want to happen. But anyway, assuming you did that step correctly and you um, came at one side from your heat and the other side with your solder, then when you look at your component, you should have a nice shiny having a hard time doing this looking through the lens. So you can see my weld there is nice and shiny and strong and it wicked up beautifully into the wire. And if you've done it correctly, then that solder is going to hold better than the wire or your component. So when you tug on it, you can give it a good tug and you can see that either the wire or the switch is gonna fail before that soldering joint is. So that means that we did a good soldering joint. So now let's go ahead and do it for our ground, which is yellow, which is ridiculous. So again, bend it 90 degrees, and then we're gonna thread it through. Lean it back so that it pushes up, and then we'll pinch that as we come up like this. So, and I like them to come up. You can sometimes, you can make them come out like this, but up for me is better because um, I feel like it helps keep stuff out of the way for when I want to solder these other lugs right here on the sides, having it sticking up is gonna be far more out of the way um, than if it's on the side and I'm trying to come into the side with the solder or the soldering iron. Um, so keeping them up is important to me. And then we're gonna do the same thing. So we're just gonna hold this heat source onto one side and then come out the other side. And um, I didn't take my cocaine this morning, so I'm shaking a little bit. And there we go. It is that simple, okay? So that's gonna get us, once it's cooled, a nice, shiny, really sturdy joint. And I'm really tugging on this right now and it definitely does not wanna come loose. Definitely the wire will break or the switch will break or my wood pit guard will break <laughs> um, at this point. Um, so that's good, that's perfect. All right, so that's how you solder to a small switch like that. The same principle applies to um, potentiometers so because they have these little holes down in these lugs right there and I do the same thing I just bend it at a 90 I stick it through and then I pinch it all the way around um, make sure that wire is nice and twisted so it's braided so it wicks up the solder and then again come in at one side with the soldering iron the other side with your solder and make sure you heat up your component first then touch it with a solder it'll melt on there and you'll have a nice strong hold now, a lot of people ask me all the time if I replace the pots that come with these kits. Um, they ask if the, they assume that it's junk and it should be replaced. 
And the short answer is yes, it is junk and it should be replaced. Um, I don't always replace it. Typically when, the only reason that I would replace pots that come with a kit is because it, I want a different value. So either it's a linear taper pot and I'd rather have an audio taper pot, or if it's a 250K pot and I'd rather have a 500K pot, then I will swap it out. But even then I don't swap it out for those high end um, name brand pots. I still usually just swap them out for cheap Chinese knockoff pots. And to my understanding, obviously the high end ones are supposed to be made with higher end components. And that may be true. But I think probably the biggest difference is the higher end ones are just made in uh, factories that are more well maintained and are more cleanly, right? More clean. So I think a lot of these are made in junk third world country factories, you know, sweatshops, let's call them what they actually are. And um, they're not the cleanliest environment. So they come with a bunch of dust and crud and stuff inside. And that's what causes the crackliness of your pot. I can zoom out, I don't know why you're we're so far zoomed in right now. So that's what causes um, pots to be uh, crackly and stuff and kind of short out as you're twisting the knob. And so the, a much easier fix than replacing the pot is to use an electronics cleaner like this. This is called Deoxit, uh, Deoxit D5. I wish somebody had told me about this stuff a long time ago, which is why I'm telling you guys about it right now. Not because this is a commercial because I want you to buy my affiliate link, but because this stuff turns low end pots into high end pots in my experience. Okay. It's like magic juice, I guess. So, but what it does is I would just squirt a little teeny tiny bit into that crevice that's right there underneath the pot. So I don't know if you can see that little crevice in there. So I'll squirt just a little bit right inside there. And then I will work the action of the pot and then I'll do it again and maybe with the pot in the opposite uh, position that it was before if it was turned all the way down then I'll turn it all the way up and do it again come at it from the other side same thing work the action and that really smooths up the action so that it feels better but more importantly is that um, it's an aerosol so it knocks off knocks out the junk that's in there and it leaves a lubricated film to protect it from future dust getting in there and causing more popping and crackling when you turn it. So that's my secret weapon. I still buy the cheap, you know, 10 pots for, for you know, $5 shipped as opposed to buying, you know, one pot for $10 shipped of the name brand. I'll just buy the cheap ones and I buy a can of this stuff. And if you've got an old guitar or whatever that's popping and crackling, this will fix it. So that's my secret weapon there for that. So in this build, I am just leaving my uh, pots in there and they're gonna be just fine. I've, I've taken the time to kind of clean them out a little bit and they'll be good. Same thing goes for these switches. Okay, if you notice a switch is getting a little bit crackly, same thing, just find a crevice where you can spray that stuff in there. It'll knock out the gunk, it'll lubricate it, and then it'll work as new. Oh, last thing I forgot to mention, I'm trying out this copper tape um, I did a tutorial video on how to shield your guitar with stuff you already have. And in that video, I talked about using aluminum foil and spray adhesive because those are things that I already have and a lot of people already have. But if you don't already have those things, then it's not free. <laughs> and spray adhesive is not super cheap. And I also got a lot of flack from scientists that know more about this stuff than I do, saying that aluminum doesn't capture as many electromagnetic frequencies as copper. So I decided to try this copper tape and I'll link it in the description as well. And so far I'm getting awesome continuity and we'll find out next week in the build how well it actually works for um, as far as shielding, if it soaks up any more frequencies than the aluminum foil does. But you guys certainly noticed all this copper shielding in here. So I just wanted to give it a shot. And that stuff does come with conductive adhesive. So uh, you don't have to worry about welding this stuff together. And anyway, it is time for me to go because you can probably hear my daughter yelling for me in the background. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, subscribe if you wanna see this build next week. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for requesting cool videos like this. Thank you for purchasing from my affiliate links. And if you go to Patreon and support me on Patreon, I've already given a couple of updates on this guitar build and I'm gonna upload some more probably before I even upload this video. So if you want some insider behind the scenes look at what I'm doing here, then feel free to support me on Patreon. All right, love you guys. My daughter's yelling even louder now, so I gotta go. All right, bye.